When trying to improve lap times, it's common to stick to racing lines. Well, here's the thing with that. You have to be able to stay on the course. And I don't know if we're at that level of uh, skill yet. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into an Atari game on the Xbox system, which maybe just blows your mind. Yes, Atari was making games for the Xbox 360. They were still around, despite having gone belly up in the 80s. Um, I'm pretty sure, like, it's Atari in name only. I don't think too many of the original Atari people were still around. This game is built on Lizard Core Gaming Technology, in case you're interested. But yes, Atari, uh, the company still exists. I don't really know how many of the old guard are actually there. But anyway, they made a racing game called Race Pro for the Xbox 360. And it's one of the games in the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. And so we're not dead yet, and so we're going to give this one a shot. Um, kind of a cool car thing they got going on up at the top there, where most of the cars are black and white, but the odd car has color. I don't know if you guys noticed. Like, see there? It's like the yellow car is allowed to have color. Um, it kind of reminds me of, okay, there's like a really old Care Bears episode from when I was a kid. I used to watch Care Bears when I was like a little toddler, and I remember there was some episode where all the color in the world got stolen away, and they had to go to some rainbow pond and like scoop up all the color into a vial, and it was like a vial full of rainbow water, and anyone they poured it on will get color again. It's like, I'm, I'm having flashbacks of Care Bears for this game, which I don't know if it bodes well or not for this game, but without further ado, let's go ahead. Enough talk about Care Bears. Let's hop in here and give this game a shot. So this game is considered a sim racer, that maintained its accessibility so it was sort of a it's it's on the simulator side of racers meaning it's ultra realistic and so on so we got a bunch of uh tracks here in fact we got a lot of tracks i was gonna uh, say let's just try each one because normally these games only have like four tracks but this is a lot so let's actually pick here we have sweden the ender anders storp hard to hard to say we got brands hatch circuit from jolly old england we have the Automa... Oh, God. Automotodrome. Bruno. There's no vowel in that word. That word needs an extra vowel. Should buy a vowel if it ever goes on the prices right. We got the Curtaba from Brazil. We got Ca California. We have to go to California. So let's just let's just pick this by scenery, then. We got all the world. I don't think... Uh, I think America's in here twice, and Canada isn't in here once. How's that for kicking the, kick the pants? Let's just start with Sweden. I don't think we've ever raced... Uh, in Sweden before. So it was a long history in both Formula One and GT Racing. Uh, hosted a world championship uh, round for the first time 27 years, etc., etc. So if you're interested in the, the backstory to the Anders Storp, you can go ahead and read this. Um, I believe it is a significant place to race, not being a racer myself. I'm just going to go ahead and take the developer's word for it. And uh, what are these? The different cars, I guess? Are these the different cars? The mini, the class selection. Oh man, there's so many options here. Oh man, okay, let's uh, let's work our way down actually. Let's start at the high end, why not? So we have, oh sweet, snakeskin green. Oh, but it's locked. Very viper orange. How about just viper red? Okay, can we just select this car? I don't care about the uh, the color. Is this is this car totally locked off? It, it it definitely is. There's there's nothing I can do to select this car. They're like, here's a car you can get if you don't suck. Unfortunately, you do. Okay, all these cars are going to be locked. Is is my uh, my intuition here? Okay, so actually, we're not going to work our way down. We're going to work our way up. We started at the bottom, and we are probably going to end at the bottom. Unfortunately. Ah, yes. Yeah, so you can get these varied and illustrious paint jobs. When I will just pick that one. Um, all that stuff looks good. Wait, semi-pro? We're going to novice, guys. You know me and racing games. So racing games are not necessarily my forte. Racing games and FPS shooters seem to be the Xbox 360 specialty, though. I think I've played more racers and first-person shooters on the Xbox, which kind of makes sense, because, like, racers and first-person shooters are really big in, uh, in America, and Xbox is the American console, you know? Like, cars and guns, baby. You know, let's, t let's knock this up an octane and hit it on to 11, you know, throw the hammer down and, like, slam it into fourth. I don't know what I'm saying. These probably aren't things. I'm not a very good American because I'm actually Canadian. But uh, Canadians often pass for Americans internationally, I think. 
I think, uh, like, being a Canadian, I, I notice that Americans are different than me. I don't know if Americans notice that I'm different. I guess they, they must. In the same way that Americans seem like, kind of like gruffer Canadians. Canadians, I have heard, seem like uh, overly polite uh, Americans. You know, sometimes to the point of being obnoxiously overly polite, which I could live with. And I also apologize for being Canadian. Uh, but anyway, off to the races. We are racing in uh, Sweden. So, uh, anyone out there from Sweden, is this an accurate representation of your homeland? Oh, how do we break? Oh, we didn't look at the brakes. Oh, God. <laughs> right into the wall. Okay, we managed to change our view. In a mad panic, I figured out how to change my view. I think I'm, I've shifted the car into neutral. Oh, this is not good. Okay. Uh, braking is an essential. Oh, we're off the course again. No. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Okay, the right trigger is gas. I'm seeing the mechanics icon. I have a feeling my car is in trouble. Okay, I think this is how you switch gears. Oh, here's here we can see our placings. Okay, hold on. We have to shift. I wish we were... Uh, I wish we didn't have to shift. Okay, the left trigger seems to break. Okay, we're, 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 we're in the race finally. Man, I'm gonna have to pay attention to gear shifting. You know what, I'm always like hesitant to avoid shifting. Oh no, wait, is it shifting automatically for me? It is. Okay, interestingly, I must be an automatic shifter, but you can manually shift. I always, Jesus, Jesus, we need like an e-brake here. I, uh, I always avoid manually shifting, but now it's like, I think, I, I did it when I was younger because I didn't understand the concept, but now as an adult, I think I could get it. I think I'm just lazy at this point. Like, I never learned how to shift gears in a car. Like, damned if I ever am going to learn, you know? Um, so we've we've uh, shamed our house and our country by going from the definitive first place to, like, wiping out of the first two corners. And now we're probably... We're 16th of 16th. So out of all the countries in the world, we're all 16 of the ones that count enough to be in this race. We are last. Let's see what's in here. Let's go exploring. When you're last in a race... <laughs> What? I entered the pit lane with too much speed. Okay, man, they weren't kidding about uh, this being a simulator game. So, all right. Now, this game, as I say, was a simulator that was considered. Uh, uh, let's let's go ahead and change uh, change uh, tracks here. It was a it was a simulator that was considered to have a lot of accessibility. So, I'm hoping that I can sort of figure out a race or two here and actually do okay. But. Uh, as I say, I'm not I'm not a race I'm not a uh, race gamer, so I'm just sort of flying by the seat of my pants on this. So we'll kind of see how this goes. Um, everything's on automatic and very easy opponents, so there's absolutely no excuse to not place. Uh, I'm I'm chalking that first one up to not knowing the buttons, but yeah, I, I'm kind of curious. Um, you know, like th so this this game ended up in the thousand one games just play before you die book. Um, I'm gonna try and figure it out. Again, it's gonna be hard for me to judge not being a racer, but like I want to know like why this racing game of all games? Um, I think one thing that's actually really hard to judge that I've realized we're in Britain by the way now is That when you play old games and you have sort of no context for why they were impressive or good back in the day It can be kind of hard sometimes to see like why people really like them Like for instance, we're looking at this game right now and you might be looking at it thinking like, yeah, it like, looks pretty solid for the 360, but we certainly have better looking games these days. And that's totally true. And so you may say like, why would anyone want to play this? Well, it may be the case. I don't know if this is true or not, but it may be the case that there really was just nothing like this at the time. Um, and so what I'm talking about here is like context, you know, like what is the context? What was the, what were the competitive, the other games around at the time? What were people's options? How did this game stack up? Um... And that is something that is really hard to judge in retrospect. So if there's a game that you never played, you never grew up with, it can be really hard to appreciate whether that game was unique enough to sort of be interesting at the time. So all I can do really, well, basically this is a huge preamble to say that all I can do is try and judge this game by, uh, by its gameplay. And I'm going to try and do that, but uh, with a little asterisk that I don't fully understand the context of this game because... I mean, everything I read said it was a great simulator for its time, so we can kind of acknowledge that, but, like, I can't tell whether that's true or not. I mean, like, it seems fine. It looks like a very nice, uh, sleek Xbox 360 game. The graphics look very nice and, and beautiful and all that. Um, this game apparently featured drivers, 
that were mostly real people. And I think that was like a thing. Like it had, okay, again, not, I'm not a racer. I don't know who these people are, but it had a human named Tiff Nidell. I don't know if that's man or woman, probably man, considering it's a racer. Tor Graves, again, not sure about gender, probably male. Um, sure, yeah, like, I don't know, that, that it, it sounds good. Um, I also find it amusing when uh, games, like, put uh, people's names on video games. Like, Sid Meier's Civilization. Who the hell is Sid Meier's? I had no idea when I was a kid. I know now he's a developer. Um, I think we encountered this with Pool 2. I think we played a game of Pool that was, like, Jeremy Black's uh, Pool Paradise or something like that. Or, Jer or, or White Knight's Pool Paradise. Um, the other big one, of course, that everyone knows is Tony Hawk. You know, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. That was like the first time I'd ever heard of an athlete getting their name on a game. Although, again, not being a skating enthusiast as a kid, all my friends were like, yeah, Tony Hawk. I was like, who? I was like, who is that? What does he do? And people just sort of had to, you know, like, I, I was very out of touch with sports guys. <laughs> who am I kidding was? Uh, not, a, not really a, a sports guy. But anyway, we're, we're dazzling the crowd here as we as we make our way around this course. They're all looking on in awe and, and, and wonder as we make our way around a 120 mile per hour turn as we drive into the grass to give them a bit of a show. Of course, we could have cut that turn on the course, but where's the fun in that? When you're five minutes ahead of your next nearest competitor, you showboat. That might be five seconds. I might be reading it wrong, but uh, either way, five seconds or five minutes. You showboat. Showboating is uh, what all sportsmanship's about. If you can't, if you can't rub it in your opponent's face, why even bother winning? Uh, that's that's uh, my motto. Yeah. Okay. So the other course we we're on was Sweden. So anyone who's from Sweden, does that accurately reflect your country? And if you are from Britain, the Great Britain, uh, Canada's grandpa or grandma, however you want to define it, um, is this your country? Does this look like England to you? I don't know. Uh, I've been to England once. I was in uh, York, actually. Uh, nice town. Uh, or city or whatever. I don't know. Uh, medieval village. It, it did actually have a, uh, a like castle wall built around the city. Like, in the city. You kind of have to like look it up to see what I'm saying. But uh, York, the city, used to, I guess in medieval times, had like a castle wall. And the modern city still has that all throughout the city. It's kind of cool, actually. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I like, and, and I like England generally. My grandparents used to watch Faulty Towers while I was in the room. I, uh, I like John Cleese, even though I, I don't think I ever really, like, sat down and watched Faulty Towers myself. Oh, uh, did I just mess up my car here? Did I mess up my car? No! Oh, no, we're getting past! Oh, we're doing so well! Oh, no! Oh, no! Nostalgia for England has cost me the race. Carlube Motor Oil. What an uncreative name for a company. Oh my god. I was going to tell you guys I also like Monty Python, but like now it seems like uh, who cares because now we're losing. People only want to know random trivia about my likes and dislikes in pop culture when I'm winning at a race. Warning. Cutting track. Drive through penalty. No! Oh man! This is this is harsh, man. You're not allowed... What, what kind of a race is this where you're not allowed... To cheat. Every race should encourage a bit of light cheating. Has they, have they never seen a game of Mario Kart? It's the cheating that makes the game exciting. Like this, ramming other racers and trying to brutally murder them is is why pe is half the reason people go to NASCAR. I have heard that half the reason people go to NASCAR is to watch the wrecks. Like you kind of want to see the cars go fast, but then you kind of it's kind of like a blood match where you just kind of like. You're not really hoping anyone dies, but like you're not a you're not a hundred percent against it. You know, like if a car went up in a ball of fire and somebody like barely made it away with their life, you'd be like, that was a good race. That was, that was good. That was interesting. Nice one. Um. So all right. Well, now we gotta like actually race here and compete. Now people are actually ahead of us. No, 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 no. Damn it. <laughs> I'm too much of an arcade racer. My racing instincts is to like gun it and run it. Like, my finger is just pulled down 100% on the gas. And, like, when turns come up, like, n when you drive a car normally, of course you slow down well in advance for a turn so you can make it. But in my arcade mind, I just want to slam on the e-brake real quick, do, like, a quick, like, 90-degree uh, turn, and then, like, gun it into gun it into 10th gear again or whatever. 
what's what's a high gear? Five? Gun it in fifth? Is that is that a saying in the racing community? Gun it in fifth, Jay. Um, we came in in fifth. Fifteenth. Sixteenth. Oh, sixteenth. <laughs> Thought we were doing better than that. Well, we did. Uh, we did get a few penalties there. So save storage device. No thanks on that. Uh, <laughs> all your current progress will be lost. I don't know if I would call this progress, but something will be lost. That's for sure. Speaking of progress, um, there's a bug in this game where if you go to play this game online, you can actually... So let's say that you, you build up a whole single-player career and unlock all sorts of stuff, and then you're like, yeah, I'm going to go online and play some multiplayer. Like, you play some career mode racing. Oh, wait, there's a career mode? What does that do? Uh, let's check out a few more races and then check... I feel like career mode's going to, like, force us into a situation where we have to win races and stuff, and at this pace, we're just going to see one track over and over. So I don't want to commit to, to uh, career just yet. I'm not ready for a career in racing, guys. This is more of an amateur hobby, okay? But uh, let's say you did build up a career mode, have all the sort of save progress, you'd unlocked all sorts of stuff. You go to play online, there's a bug that could erase all your career progress. Just like that. And let me tell you, that's one hell of a bug. Um, okay, well, let's look for a country that doesn't have a lot of curves. Because I'm sick of all these, these curves. Like, that one, China looks okay. It has one really nasty spot, but beyond that, it looks okay. Oh, that's what I want. I think we're going for that one. Good old Italy knows what I want. This one's a little curvy. Uh, Portugal. Uh, oh, we got to check out the road to America. Road racing at its best. Road America. All right. And let's try Italy and America. And then we'll sort of reevaluate at that point. So we're racing. We're racing minis. I hope you guys are fans of the Italian job because it's basically all you're gonna see today. I would love to race on something more advanced, but uh, you know they gotta give you a reason to keep racing, and that reason is to unlock more cars and stuff. So you know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna continually um, tease you there. Um, going back to the game though for a minute, I do know that like when this game came out. Okay, so I, I was kind of saying like I, I wasn't 100% sure why this game's in the book, and I'm going to try and judge and experience and blah, blah, blah. The one thing I did find when I was kind of researching this game, though, is it kind of has, like, decent but not, like, amazing ratings. You know, like, I looked up at the ratings it got back in the day when it came out, and it was considered reasonable. There were some complaints, though, like, uh... This game d does have weather effects, so it's like you can race in the rain and stuff, but it's only cosmetic, so the car doesn't get, like, slippery on the track or anything, which is kind of like a bit of a letdown for a game that is supposed to be a racing simulator, you know? Um, oh, God! That car saved me! Saved me! I'm, oh, I got a penalty for cutting the track again. Stop giving me penalties, dude! Look, I'm giving people the people a show. Okay, I'm going to try and keep that guy ahead of me so the next time I get a big turn, I can just slam into him and hopefully stay on the road. Oh, you get out of here, though. Ugh. Damn. This game may be a simulator, but it doesn't let you bully other cars nearly enough. In my racing games, I want to be able to, like, cause some vehicular damage. Okay, here we go. No braking. No braking. <laughs> Cutting the track. Oh, ignoring, ignored reckless driving penalty. Oh my god. What, do you have to earn a license in this game? Okay, hold on. We're, we're giving this one another try. Um, wait, 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 no. I want to restart the session. Yes. Go ahead. Make my day. Um, so yeah, this game had, like, reasonable reviews. And honestly, like, so far it seems fine as a simulator game, but, like... I don't know. I'm not, like, I'm not, like, you know, it's not blowing my socks off. My socks are still completely on my feet. Which, you know, like, sometimes... So we've played a lot of games from this 1001 book. We've played a lot of games. I try to give every game the benefit of the doubt. Because part of this journey... You know, some people say, Oh, Jay, you know, like, some of the games in the book, like, aren't that good. Like, why do you stick with the book? Why don't you just, you know, play good games and stuff? And it's sort of like, yeah, but that's not really the spirit of what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to experience different things. I'm trying to be open-minded about it. And I'm not looking to necessarily play the best games that have ever been created. I kind of want to see what's in this book. Like, what did the authors think were, were good games? Oh, cutting the track? Are you kidding me? 
I, I maintain I got run off the road there by yellow car. My nemesis, yellow car. Um, and any anyone who makes a list of games to play is going to have some personal biases. So, of course, we're going to encounter some games that were, you know, personal faves of some of the authors of this book. Because the game, the book was published by multiple people. Multiple people contributed to the list. Um, and I think that's fine. You know, even if I made a list of Jay's 1001 video games you must play, um, there are going to be games... Ah, oh, damn it. I was breaking there, too. There are going to be games that uh, that you guys don't don't agree with. Like, not everyone is going to agree with my list, you know? Like, And the same if you made a list of a 1,001 games. Not everyone's going to agree. So I'm fine with playing through and, like, finding games that I'm sort of, like, scratching my head. Like, why was this included, after all? Um, but it does make me wonder, like, what is the story here? Like, who, who was making a list and was like, you know what's got to go in? What has to go in is Race Pro. Race Pro. You know, like, they're, like, adamant about it. They're, like, Race Pro. Like, wh what was it about this game that made the original author, like, love it this much? Or, like, what were, what were his favorite memories or her favorite memories or whoever it was, you know? Like, what was it about this game, like, the time it came out that, like, you know, it was like, wow, like, this is so good. Like, did they do all the career mode? You know, like, I, I'm almost more interested in just what's the personal history of the person who really likes this game, who put it in the book for us, and, like, I want to hear their story, you know? Like, I wish I could get every author who contributed to the book to come on my channel and just, like, not explain themselves as in, like, you better explain yourself or there's going to be hell to pay. But just explain yourself as in, I just want to know the story. Like, I'm not judging you one way or the other. Like, we all have games that, uh, you know, we know... You know, there's some games that I think we know that we like, that everyone likes, that they're, like, you know, AAA games that are, like... You know, or indie games that like got rave reviews that are like you know darling for awards and this kind of stuff but like I'll be the first to admit there's a number of games I like that I would include in a book and in, in a thousand and one book myself that I think not many people would agree with you know like there's some game and I bet we all have this you know in fact you know what I, I challenge you guys you know think about it for a second here what are what are some games that you legit like you legit enjoy, you legit, you know, would recommend to other people, but at the same time, you can objectively recognize this is probably not a very good game to many people. Most people who sit down and try and play this are going to be confused. It's going to have too steep a learning curve. People just aren't going to want to play it. I love it. I enjoy it, but I recognize that not everyone will. I'm actually really curious. Can you guys come up with a couple games? Because because I'm going to contend that although, you know, I, I may be totally off base here not being a racer and probably maybe other people looking at this who are uh, video game racing fans might look at this and say, Jay, actually, you know, this is a, a really good game for these several reasons. Um, but to me, I'm looking at this thinking this is a decent racer, decent simulator, but I don't think anything jumps out as this is a game that necessarily should be in a, a top list per se to like a casual gamer. And so I would suggest that maybe this is one of the author's just personal picks, which is totally fine. So I'm wondering, like, what, what would your personal picks be for games that, you know, again, you love, you enjoy, but at the same time you can recognize this probably isn't for everyone, or this may be considered like a niche pick, or will only appeal to sort of like a niche audience. I'm really curious. I'm, I'm A, curious if you guys can sort of be that objective. I think, I think all of you could be, actually. Um, but then B, I'm really curious to hear what people's people's suggestions are. So please, if, if you're listening to this, watching this, and, you, and you're thinking, oh, I think I could name a game or two, uh, definitely definitely leave me a comment. Definitely name it. And uh, and let's see what we can come up with here. I, I, I would try and come up with something on the spot, but you guys have no idea how distracting it is to play a video game, be concentrating on it, and trying to be interesting and think at the same time. I can only do two of those three. So if you find my videos interesting and you notice that I'm actually playing them without being totally terrible at them, guess what? I'm probably not thinking very hard because it is thinking. Thinking takes effort. Surprise, surprise. And uh, my, my whole brain can only take so much. <laughs> it's sad to admit I can't think and play at the same time. But it's true. It's true. I'm not here trying to think or be insightful. I'm just here trying to have some fun, guys. Just trying to... Trying to find some fun stuff to talk about while we enjoy the art that we all love, which is that of video games. So what is a game that you like that, uh... What? Drive-through penalty? 
Screw you guys. I don't know why I'm getting penalties, but to hell with all these guys. Run our last lap. Let's just cheat. We're straight up cheating at this point. Ha ha ha! Oh! <laughs> Uh, DNF. My, uh, those should be just on my car. Those should be my initials. That, those should be my initials in, like, arcade games. You know, instead of, like, J-A-Y, it should be D DNF. Um, okay, well, if we had kept going around the track, the race would have ended legitimately. So, that that's what it would look like. You know what, let's go ahead and give career mode. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. We gotta do one more track. We got to check out the American course, uh, road racing at its best in Road America. And then after that, we'll sort of peek into career mode, kind of see what that has to offer. There's like no other cars though. I <gasps> Wait, there's another car? Oh my God, there are other cars. We didn't have to be racing with the Mini the whole time after all. Holy crap. Oh, we're going to an extreme. Oh, it's locked. Okay, hold on. Is this locked? No, that's very boxy. What about this one? Oh, damn. The Russian Bears Motorsport sold. Sold. Russian Russian Winter Animals. I'm sold. <laughs> All right. I What are those numbers? They like the intensity of the turn. I think that's what it is. Like, the higher the number, the less intense of a turn it is. Okay. It's so like twos are really... You really got to slow down for the twos. The ones, I guess, are the hardest. It's kind of like if you guys ever go rock climbing, they usually like rate the grading of the different walls. So it's like a six, a seven, and they have like decimals, like a 7.8 and an 8.3 and whatever. I haven't, I haven't rock climbed in years, but I used to do it all the time. I loved it. I rock climbed in California, actually, which is where this race is taking place. And uh, oh yeah, we're finally in a powerful car. Let's do it. And our attempts, our early attempts to disregard the safety of the other drivers not only didn't get us a penalty, but didn't get us anywhere. You know, I, again, I, I only have so much respect for a simulator game that doesn't allow you to just live out the fantasy of vehicular manslaughter. Um, oh. Man, you can actually feel the speed here. Oh, and the other cars are actually competing with us. I kind of like this. Um, speaking of simulators, by the way, so this game obviously falls in the simulator uh, category. When you think about it, video games kind of like fall in one of two categories. And actually, I would say these are not mutually exclusive categories. So maybe it's more of a continuum or like games can have different levels of each of these. But games can either be games where it's all about sort of the gameplay and stuff. And so like a game could be very abstract, like checkers, where it's not simulating anything. It's just about like, uh, you know, a game and like Mario Brothers. It's not simulating anything. It's just a game. You know, I mean, it's, it's simulating the experience of, or, you know, fat Italian plumbers lost in a dream world of magic. But other than that, it's, it's not simulating. So it's just a game, right? So games can be games. But video games can also be simulators. They're sort of like a virtual space. So there's kind of two fantasies you can live out in video games. Like, one is like a totally abstract kind of fantasy of just having fun, which is where games that are more gamey would fall. And then the other side is like some kind of simulator fantasy of like, you know, running a country or like being a race car driver or like going on, you know, detective adventures, all that kind of stuff. Um, I would say that the big, the big categories of simulators tend to be things like racing simulator, driving simulator and all that. But you could even consider like adventure games, like life simulators and stuff like that. And like The Sims is definitely a simulator, you know. Um, people often though, I think, think more of like driving and racing games and flying games when you say simulator. But like, this, the kind of simulating I want to be doing is not necessarily driving. I'd say driving simulators are just totally fine. Um, but like the simulator that I legit want is like the Star Trek holodeck where you can like simulate a life. Where you could just like, you know, like basically like Grand Theft Auto it up. Like you could just steal cars and like live in big houses and like, you know, like just live a literal fantasy. I think that's that's the kind of simulator I want. <laughs> Forget about driving simulators. Be working on that, which arguably they are with Grand Theft Auto. Um, and again, adventure games are sort of like that because you get to sort of live through. Adventure games are like novels come to life. It's like you get to live through a fantastical story. It's more on rails than like a Grand Theft Auto, but similar kind of stuff. So, I mean, I think what I'm talking about is I just wish, wish there was a Westworld. I wish Westworld was an actual place. 
like West, like uh, you know, where you could just pay money and go and like live in a totally fantasy world. You could be whoever you want, no rules, reinvent yourself. But if you could do that in the privacy of your own home, so that you know no one else could see what kind of a monster you become. And I say like you know, because nobody wants to see the monster you become. Because of course you know if you had a let's say that you know you had a totally digital fantasy world in your computer and you could go in just be whoever you wanted. Everyone would just, of course, break all the rules. I mean, that's the fun thing about video games, is being able to do things you could never do in real life. So in real life, a lot of people would never hurt another person. A lot of people would, you know, never, like, steal a car and stuff like that. But you put Grand Theft Auto in their hands, and the first thing they're doing is beating up random civilians and stealing cars. Because that's the thing that, like, when you know you're not actually hurting anyone, it's kind of fun to live that fantasy out, right? So that's all I'm talking about here. Wish fulfillment fantasy... These are the kinds of video games that I get sort of excited about in terms of the future, you know? Like, when you think about game development, how it's progressed over the years, you know, like, Mario 3 is just as fun today as it ever was. If they make a new Mario game next year that's as good as Mario 3, good, good. Another platforming Mario game, great. I I will happily play it. You could add it to my repertoire. But that's not the game development that really excites me about, like, what we're going to be playing in 50 years. It's like, are we going to be, like, living in our own personal matrices? 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 (laughs) Where we can just, like, live out whatever power fantasy we want. Like, live other people's lives. Like, that is kind of the cool... And that's, like, the Star Trek holodeck, you know? Like, people would get addicted to the holodeck because they would just create fantasies where, like, all the women on the ship love them and all the men that were uh, higher up than them in rank were like you know pushovers i mean that's the barkley episode of star trek next generation barkley is what everyone would do if the holodeck was real i don't know but anyway maybe i'm revealing more about myself than anything else here i have crazy crazy power fantasies guys crazy power fantasies um i actually don't even think i'd be the worst of of people out there um yeah i'd feel bad if i you know i feel bad in video games when you're mean to npcs like when you le- like when you just legit do something mean to NPCs, I, I honestly feel bad. Like sometimes I sit down to play like uh, Fallout. Like I'll sit down to play Fallout Three, and I'll be like, "All right, we're gonna be bad this time. We're just gonna be bad." Because like I feel like most people when they play games like Fallout, where you have a choice of being good or bad, you kind of default to being good and helping people. So sometimes you have to go in with the mindset of "I'm gonna be a dick. I'm gonna be evil." But halfway through, I find myself not being able to follow through on it. Being like, well, maybe I can just be good to this one person. Or maybe, like, every bad guy needs an ally. Maybe I can be good to this one town and help them out, you know? And, like, before you know it, it's a slippery slope to just being a good guy again. So, um, yeah, there you go. Um, anyway, racing in California. I mean, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of, like, blathering on and on about random gaming topics. Mostly because, like, I don't know, like, what what could I say about this this game? I mean, we're just kind of going around in the loop, racing in a very simulatory way. Every 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 lap seems the same. We can't run anyone off the road. We can't. God forbid if we drove in the wrong direction. Here, let's see what happens. They're gonna give us some penalty and kick us out of the race virtually instantly. Um, oh, we can cause a traffic jam though. That's something. I'm, I'm shocked that they haven't kicked us out of the race yet. Okay, here we go. We're going to drive in the wrong direction. See what happens. In most racing games, you can do this and kind of have some fun. I have a feeling these guys these guys are the fun police. They aren't going to allow this to happen. Maybe they will. Well, they, you kicked me out of the race for, like, cutting a corner, but this is okay? Okay. <laughs> it took... You know what? I drove in the wrong direction for too long. Let me just say, it took you guys too long to figure out what was happening there. It took you too long. So, I don't know. It's it's a it's a racing game that doesn't let you have very much fun. It's, uh, I guess, I don't know. So, like, this is the opposite of being able to live out your fantasies. Instead of being able to have unrealistic fantasies where you do crazy things that put people in harm, they're like, no, 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 you can't harm our precious NPCs. Those other drivers are terrified. Get him off the road. They kick you out. That's not the fantasy people want to go into when they uh, when they play a racing game. All right, let's let's look. Let's just look at career mode. See what this game has to offer. Become a professional racing driver and earn a living by racing for different teams. Okay, we get to sign contracts and stuff. Okay, we have three hundred credits. We have to like buy a car too. Oh God, is it back to these things? Beat the lap time to unlock a contract. Not prof. Are you kidding me? Why would it start me off on professional? 
It's like your performance so far has indicated to us our algorithms have determined that you are the rank of professional. I, I like zero of four races have been complete. I don't know why they would think that I would count as a professional. We'll just chalk it up to the game not knowing. Oh geez, it just starts us in uh starts us off right away. There we go. It's like there's there's no countdown here. You just get accelerated. It's like they uh when they launch uh launch vipers in uh, Battlestar Galactica and they just they're in like the launch tubes and they just like fire out at full speed. Jesus, I'm braking. If you if you don't believe it, I am braking. There's got to be a different brake here. Well, that looks backwards. Hold on. We have time. Let's figure this out. That's places. Let's look backwards. I can't figure it out. As far as I can tell, that is braking. Here, let's drive like this for a while. Welcome inside the car. I want to let you guys in. Hey, you guys are sitting right there. All right, you're my co-pilots. My co-pilots in life. Oh, my God! <laughs> that was going to kill us all. I like how they don't consider... They're like, well, he just flew off the road. He's only putting himself in danger. We'll let that one pass. Um, okay. Is career mode, like, legit just going to be more of this? Is it legit just more of this? I mean... No, oh, I can't break! Jeez. <laughs> I was braking and holding to the left. And my car just, like, went straight for that thing. Okay, I can't see what I'm doing in here. I blame it on being in the car. Alright, so... This is career mode, racing by yourself. I presume eventually you'll get money and you can, like, race against other cars, but, uh... But, yeah. I mean, I think this is the end of our simulatory journey into, uh, the world of Race Pro. I think we have learned one thing today, guys, is that I'm not a race pro. I should be playing race amateur, or, like, even worse than that. What's below an amateur? Uh, I mean noobs, but I guess I'm a racing noob. Yeah, where's racing noob? I'm not even a noob. It's not like I'm new to the concept of racing games. I'm just not very good or motivated at them. So we needed like another title. What would you call a person like me? There's a question for you. <laughs> uh, probably just someone who sucks at racing. I would accept that title. Uh, I, you know what? I'm. In, I have no delusions about my. Oh shoot! All right, let's just go for it. Forget it. if we can't break, then we're not even gonna try. I think we might have flattened a tire, though. Okay. There's just a convenient outer road over there. Um, I, I did go into the pit stop once, but I think I flew through it at too high a speed, and they uh, ejected me from my racing career. I guess, you know what? This, this mode is basically how long can Jay have a career? How long before they... Oh, damn it. Before they actually take his license away. And uh, the answer is not very long. Okay, well, anyway, I think we've seen enough of Race Pro for today. Race Pro, one of the games in the book of Thousand One Video Games you must play before you die. And I will say that I do, I do kind of, I have a sneaking suspicion that this is a personal pick from someone. Because I honestly don't know who this is going to appeal to besides people who are really into racing games. Again, I'm throwing my hands up here. I could be wrong. You know, prove me wrong, guys. Prove me wrong. This is just my own opinion, my own take on it. As someone not familiar with racing games, I'm kind of playing this game thinking, like, who's going to have the patience, honestly? Uh, but that said, if you are into racing games, this may actually be one you want to check out. There seems to be a lot of uh, sort of different tracks. It is, it is very realistic. So if you do like the simulator, uh, racing simulators especially, uh, not those crazy free-for-all Grand Theft Auto simulators where you just live out power fantasies, but a racing simulator, then you might actually quite enjoy this game. It might be a nice one to check out. Um, it's not that expensive to pick up on the 360 these days, and the graphics look uh, pretty reasonable, even for today's standards. You know, be careful with going online if you even can anymore, but it could wipe out your career progress. So you may not want to do that. Um, and just be aware, there's other things like you know, the weather effects are cosmetic only and stuff, or so I've read. So, again, it, it, the game was rated reasonably well. I just, uh, again, I'm scratching my head as to why this would be, a, like, a must-play. If you were making a list of a 1,001 games, as the people in the book did, for games you must play, I would love to know the story of who picked this and why, and, like, what his own favorite memories, or her own favorite memories of this game were. Because there's definitely a reason, guys. Don't think there isn't a reason. 
It's, uh, and there might be good reasons. We just don't know. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Race Pro. What do you guys think? Is it a game that looks interesting to you? And are you a racing fan? And if so, you know, what, what would your take on this game be? Or are you like me where you're not terribly into racing games and this game sort of probably wouldn't appeal to you? Or maybe you're like me and you're not really into racing games, but you're seeing something here that I'm not. And uh, this game might appeal to you. Whatever your thoughts, let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. And as always, whether you agree with my personal assessment or not, I hope you've enjoyed checking out the game. If you have, go ahead, slap that like button, slap your finger on the subscribe button, and uh, until we meet again, my friends, I'm just going to be here having a lackluster racing career. Trust me, this career is going nowhere. I made all the wrong decisions in life to bring me to this point. My racing character did, of course. Not me personally. I made cool decisions. I play video games on YouTube. It's awesome. Trust me. <laughs> but anyway, you all take care of yourselves. And peace. Man, they, they don't even let you explore the countryside. They have invisible walls set up here. They really just suck all the fun out of this game, don't they?